Hi, I'm Ranjit, and in this video, I'll be talking about a point in BREP algorithm. So this algorithm decides whether a point in 3D space is inside or outside a BREP solid. So I was researching this topic uh, for something else, for, for a different project, and I found some ray casting algorithms where you cast out a ray from the test point and count the number of intersections between that ray and the BREP for which you're testing. And you decide whether that point is inside or outside based on the number of intersections, whether it's even or odd. And I don't really, I'm not a big fan of these types of algorithms because they come with a lot of special cases. So you know, if, if the ray happens to pass through one of the edges, you have to do things a little bit differently. And if it happens to pass through one of the vertices, then you have to do things differently. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of algorithms that have lots of special cases. And yeah, so I, I was, I, I digged a, a little bit deeper on different algorithms that do this. And I found a research paper from 1984, which uh, has an algorithm that's really elegant. It's it's robust and uh, reliable, and it doesn't have any weird special cases. It's easier to understand. You know, it's very intuitive, and I was surprised at why this was this algorithm was so obscure, and why you know there weren't any blog posts or or discussions online about this algorithm. So I decided to make a YouTube video about it. So. I will be demonstrating that algorithm with a Python script for Rhino. But before I write any code, I want to explain the algorithm briefly. So this algorithm uses solid angle measurements. So if you're not familiar with uh, what solid angle is, then I recommend pausing this video and reading up about it in, in a new tab and resuming the video. So the total solid angle around a point in 3D space, the complete sphere, that's a terrible sphere, but you get the idea, would be four pi. And the units for solid angle is stair radians. So what we're trying to do essentially is measure the solid angle contributions of each phase of a, of a of our BREP and then make the decision of whether the point is inside or outside based on the total solid angle contribution. So the way we calculate that is for each phase, we calculate the solid angle contribution alpha. Okay, before we get into that, let me just, so for, for a solid angle contribution of an infinitesimally small area element, let's call it Delta A, the solid angle contribution of that area at a point P, which is at a distance R, is delta A over R squared. This is an infinitesimally small area. So if you have like a, you know, like a big square in space and you are trying to calculate the solid angle contribution of that square at that point, you can do it by taking this expression and then integrating that expression over the entire uh, surface of that square, uh, performing that. So you'd be doing that over the entire surface of the square. So yeah, I mean, I'm not actually going to need to do that in this video, but just for the, the concept. So what we want to do to decide whether the point is inside or outside a B rep is to calculate the solid angle contribution for each phase alpha and then we calculate a special factor F for that phase, depending on whether the normal to that phase is pointing towards or away from our test point. So let's say we have a tetrahedron. That's, that's a very simple thing to draw. And we have a point inside the tetrahedron and we are calculating the solid angle contribution of that phase at our, at our test point. So we calculate the solid angle with whatever method. I mean, we're not gonna we're not gonna have to do any calculus here, but what I explained earlier was just for the concept of it. 
but after cal calculating the solid angle ca contribution alpha, we have this normal pointing outwards from the face. And in this case, we know that the normal is pointing away from the test point. So for that, uh, our f value will be plus 1. If our test point were outside, the normal would be pointing towards the test point, making our f value negative 1. So that's just a convention that we follow. So that's how we determine our f value. And we calculate these, the, the alpha and the f for each phase. So for the i phase, let's call them i alpha i and f i. And we add these, add the product alpha i f i for all phases. We, we calculate the sum of it. And we decide whether the point is inside or outside our B rep based on this final value, the total sum of alpha i f i. So if this value is equals to 4 pi, that means inside. If this value is less than 4 pi, so it's somewhere between, uh, I'm going to call it total. Uh, that means undecisive. It could be outside, or it could be that the B rep is not closed. And if if you get a value that's greater than four pi, that means something. I mean, even this uh, the second case is undecisive. It's outside or open B rep. If you get a value that's more than four pi, then you know yeah you. you there's something weird about the B-Rep. It's either not a manifold, not non-manifold shape, or you know, there's coincident faces that are overlapping. It's not a clean, the geometry is not clean. But yeah, we're looking for inside. So if it's 4 pi, we can be sure that it's inside. OK, so this is the algorithm. But just to form an intuitive understanding of why that's the case why 4 pi total solid angle contribution means inside. So let's say we have a solid that looks like that. OK, that's not the best drawing, but you get the idea. It's like a cube, which a portion subtracted from it. So if I draw the section view of that along along that section plane it would look something like that okay now let's say we have our test point inside somewhere around there okay no that's too big okay now we start calculating the solid angle contributions right so we calculate the solid angle contributions for all these faces. So that be the solid angle for that face and that face and the top face would be that. I mean, it's in 3D because it's solid angle, but th this is the section view, so it looks like just angle, but you get the idea. So now let's say we me we're measuring the solid angle contributions for these three faces. Faces one, two, and three, right? So the normals for these faces are something like this. They're pointing outwards from our solid. So for the faces one and three, the normals are pointing away from the test point. So we will, the F value for these faces will be plus one. right? Because the normals are pointing away. For the phase number two, the normal is pointing towards the test point, so the F value will be negative one. But if you look at the solid angle contributions from these three phases, you can see that the overlap between the solid angles of phases one and three is exactly equal to the solid angle contribution of phase two. 
that's right there, that part. So when we add these three numbers up, the overlap is canceled out by the solid angle contribution of phase two because we multiplied it with a negative one. So these faces, no matter, you know, it doesn't matter whether your B rep is convex or, or it's, it doesn't have to be convex. It could be any weird shape and it could be convoluted. As long as it's closed, all these uh, solid angle contributions should, you know, cancel each other out and, and add up to four pi if the point is inside. And if the point is outside, the idea is that the solid angle contributions of the faces pointing towards the test point cancels out the solid angle contributions of the faces pointing away from the test point exactly giving us the zero sum. So that's the idea behind the algorithm. And it's really intuitive once you understand it and you can apply it for two dimensions to, to write an algorithm to, you know, for a point in polygon algorithm by calculating instead of solid angle, it, that would be just normal plane angle. So yeah, I hope that gives you an intuitive understanding of what the algorithm is doing. Now we can try to write that and test it. Okay, so uh, let's start with the basic stuff, import Rhino script syntax. Okay, I'll, I'll save this, whatever. I'll make this uh, script available with a link in the description somehow, but for now I'll save it with whatever name. So let's write out our the main clause. So what we are going to do is get a uh, uh, so okay, so for this for, for the, in this implementation, let's restrict ourselves to meshes to keep it simple and then to demonstrate the concept essentially. Get a mesh from the user. Get a point from the user. Uh, report whether the point is inside, outside. So, okay, that's essentially what we're going to try and do. Uh, in fact, you know what, I'm gonna remove the second step. It's, instead of, just, uh, instead of selecting the point, we're trying to demonstrate the algorithm. So let's just test for a known point like the origin or something. Okay, so now let's write a method that, that, that uh, does the testing so is point inside, let's call it that. And the first parameter will be our mesh. And when we get it from the user, it will be an ID. So the second parameter will be our point PT. Okay, now we are trying to calculate a sum of solid angle contributions of each face. For, for, for all the faces with our special F value multiply as a multiplication factor. So we want to loop through all the faces. So let's get a list of faces. Hmm. The, okay, the IntelliSense thing is not, I guess it's not called IntelliSense if, if it's outside Visual Studio, but whatever that's called, it's not behaving right. So I think the mesh faces function will give us what, what we're looking for. I haven't tried this before, so I have to read this documentation to make sure that we're using the right one. So this returns a list of points, 3D points that define the face of the vertices of the mesh. If the face type is true, this optional second parameter, if it's set to true, then the faces are, faces are returned as both quads and triangles. Yeah, for triangles, the third and fourth vertex will be identical. Okay, so let's just make it simple by getting just the triangles so that we know how to unpack the list. 
if, if we just get the triangles, we'd have to unpack the list three points at a time. So, okay. We pass the mesh ID that we got from the user and the face type parameter will be if the face type is false, then it only returns triangles, so it has to be false. Okay, we got the faces. And for so that's a list of vertices. So let's oh not. So let's start a loop. Okay, so we want to go through these faces, go through this list of points three at a time because we know that they're triangles. So that'll be our increment. And yeah, I'm going to ignore the, the out of bounds exceptions here because this is just a demo and I'm hoping that the the number of points in this faces is, is a multiple of three. Let's call this face vertices to, to be more accurate because that's what that function is returning. Okay, so now we're iterating through them. So now we have the three vertices. Let's call them PD point A which is our face works I let me copy paste copy paste that line and let's call these point A B and C which are the vertices of our our face now we have to calculate the solid angle contribution of this triangular face at our test point which is P, just PT. So we're not going to do any calculus for this. Uh, I looked up ahead of time the formula uh, for, so that, that essentially is a tetrahedron. So the, the mesh face is the, that could be the base of the tetrahedron and, and the, the lines joining the point A, B, and C to our test point, that they, they are the edges of the tetrahedron. So I looked this up ahead of time and that's the formula, formula that gives us the solid angle contribution between three vectors, solid angle between three vectors, essentially a tetrahedron. And we can simplify this formula if we assume that the vectors are unitized. So that part will be just become, that, that'll become one. And these quantities will also become one, the magnitudes of the, the, the vectors. So these are the vectors pointing from our test point to each each vertex of, of the mesh face. So let me get this out of the way. I have, I mean, you can, this. I'll link that page in the description. So if you want to uh, stare at that formula for longer, you can go to that page and do that. But I'm gonna just implement it later. Okay. So we need those three vectors, the vectors pointing from our test point to the vertices of, of the, the face. So that means that let's, let's use the same convention and call them ABC. So our A will be, will be RS dot vector subtract. So the first vector is what we're subtracting from. That should be the mesh vertex. And let me just copy paste that. Oops. Okay. So that should give us the three vertices pointing from uh, the test point to the vertices of the mesh face. Now, now, now let's implement, we have to calculate uh, the solid angle between these three vectors using the formula that I just showed. So to keep it clean, let's implement that in a different method. Let's call it get solid angle. And it takes three vectors, A, B, and C. And 
So it's a, it, the formula is this fraction. So I'm going to call, I'm going to write, calculate the numerator first. And that's just the triple product of these three vectors. So RS dot vector dot product, RS dot vector cross product of A and B and dot product of that with C. So that gives us the triple product. So if you're not, I mean, triple product is essentially the volume of the, the parallelopipe that these three vectors define. And sometimes the, the, this value could be less than zero because of the dot product, but we're trying to calculate the solid angle contribution and, and we, have our, our, we have our special factor F which depends on the normal direction of the phase. So we don't really want negative values from this solid angle calculation. So let's just take the absolute value. So now we have the numerator and let's now calculate the denominator in that expression separately. Okay, let's just unitize these three vectors ahead of time so that our calculation is simpler. Yeah, I mean, this is not the best implementation to, it's not the most efficient to have to unitize all the vectors, but the Python scripting for Rhino doesn't have operator overloading like C sharp and Rhino common. So the expressions get really messy and I don't like that. I like keeping them simple and I'm not worried about efficiency for this demo. So, oops, okay. So we unitized the three vectors. So that simplifies our denominator to one plus sum of all three dot products essentially. Okay, that's annoying when the, the prompt thing just stops working because you made a mistake. I forgot the plus sign here, but okay, so we have A, B, B, C, and then C, A. So yeah, that that's our denominator. Yeah, no, in fact, let's not calculate the absolute value for the numerator separately. Let's calculate, let, let's get the absolute value once we have the final solid angle. So what we do then is the calculate the inverse tan function for this fraction, the fraction of numerator over denominator. So instead of using just a tan, which whose range is limited, we will use a tan two. Oh, I guess we have to import math first to do that. What the hell was that? Okay. Uh, angle is math dot. So yeah, a tan two extends the range to from, from negative pi to pi, and also it takes care of the division by zero cases, which are nasty if you have to handle them manually. So instead of passing the fraction, fra instead of passing the fraction, we pass the numerator and denominator separately. Now we have the, okay, that's, that's not, we, mul we have to multiply that with two to get the total solid angle contribution of that triangular face. Now let's return the absolute value because we are only looking for uh, positive solid angle contributions. So, okay, we got our solid angle.
calculation implemented in a separate function. So let's just use that function. OK, so we have that angle. Now we have to calculate our special factor, the f value, which is either plus 1 or negative 1. For that, we need to know which way the normal is pointing. So let's write another function to calculate the normal for, for uh, three vertices. So I'm just going to use a, b, c. It's a little bit confusing, but it doesn't matter. OK, I'll call it pqr. OK, so we have to calculate the normal. So we're going to assume that these points are coming in in counterclockwise direction. So if we take the cross product of two edges, two consecutive edges, we should get a normal that's pointing out outwards from the solid. But if the points are coming in in clockwise direction, then all our normals would be pointing inwards in our BREP. But that's not a problem because if we invert our convention, you know, with the, if the f value is negative 1 in, instead of positive 1, we would end up with a value of negative 4 pi. So as long as all the faces follow the same convention, uh, we, I mean, the absolute value, the total absolute value should be 4 pi. So if, if they follow the convention that we discussed earlier, the normal is pointing outwards, we will get positive 4 pi. If not, then we'll get negative 4 pi. So we, don't, we, we, we shouldn't be worried about the order as long as all faces follow that same order of vertices. So uh, we have to, so let's just write a return statement. This is simple enough. Vector cross product of two of the edges. So the first edge is from P to Q. Uh, so that would be Q comma P. And the second would be from Q to R. So that would be r comma q. And let's just unitize this vector. Well, it's a normal, so we don't actually have to unitize it. OK, so that should give us our normal. So so we want to pass the vertices, not a, b, c, so but, but p, point a, point b, and point C to get our normal. And to decide whether that normal is pointing towards or away from our test point, let's we have to get a vector connecting the test point to the center of the, the face. So let's write another function to get the centroid. Of three vertices. So we just have to return rs dot vector scale one over three. Let's just make it three point zero. I, I don't think Python does that for the integer thing, but just to be sure. Okay. So there that we have to pass the sum of the three vectors. So. Oh, that's that's gonna get messy. So let's do some. Yeah, the operator overloading would have made this more cleaner, but so that's the sum of the three vectors, and we are scaling it by one third. And that should give us the average of the three vectors. So that, that's our centroid. So that's the center of the face. 
again, we pass the vertices, not the ABC vectors. So we got our normal, we got our center. So we can test whether the normal is pointing towards or away from the point by calculating the dot product of uh, dot product of the normal with the vector joining the center to the test point. So that let's just call it face vec. This is the vector that's joining the center of the face to the test point. It doesn't matter what we call it, but I don't know. I couldn't come up with a clever descriptive name for that vector. But. Okay, so our test point and the center. Oh, sorry, no, not that. The center. So that's the vector. And the second vector in our dot product will be the normal. So let's calculate the dot product. I guess it's called vector dot product of normal and face vec. So if this dot product is greater than zero, that means the normal is pointing away from, sorry, if this dot product is less than zero, that, that means the normal is pointing away from the test point. If it's greater than zero, then the normal is pointing towards the test point. If it's equals to, equal to zero, then potentially the point is on the face, but not necessarily because, yeah, not necessarily. So, Let's just, if it's equal to zero, let's just uh, consider, like, let's just group that with the less than zero category. So if it's uh, on the face, then we count that as inside. Well, should we do that? Well, it doesn't matter. It's going to become clear in, in a second. So let's calculate our special factor f is 1 if dot is greater than 0, else negative 1. Now, uh, we have to calculate a running total of these alpha f values. So let's do total angle equals 0 and total angle plus equals angle times factor. What's going on? Okay, angle times factor. So that's our running total, the sigma alpha i f i value should be calculated by the time we exit this loop. And now we have to decide based on that total value. Okay, so it's not going to be exactly 4 pi because, because of numerical uncertainty. So let's just uh, include a tolerance parameter in this method with a default value of 1 e negative 6. That's, so we're trying to see if a value is 4 pi or less than 4 pi. So 4 pi means that's about 12.5. And if it's uh, like in the neighborhood of 12.5, like within that tolerance, that's close enough. Like if it's less than 12 point, it's, if it's less than four pi by that much amount, then that means our B rep is, has a crack in it or something like that. And, you know, we can, we can consider that as point being inside the B rep. It doesn't matter. So, okay. Now, okay, so if you remember, I said that the normal direction depends on the convention, you know, the order in, in which these vertices are provided. And if these vertices are provided in the clockwise uh, direction, you know, when looking at the face from outside, then the the, the the normal like the, the the order in which these vertices are provided changes which way the normals point 
and that changes the sign of our factor. And we could potentially end up with a negative four pi uh, in some situations, if the depending on the order of the face vertices. So just to be sure, let's calculate the absolute value. Now we have to check whether that's equal to four pi within that tolerance. And we can do that by if absolute value of abs total minus four times math dot pi is less than tolerance. So the absolute difference between the total angle and four pi, if it's less than tolerance, well, that means the point is inside because, so let's just return that Boolean. And, yep, okay. yeah, the point is inside. So, you know, you know what, in fact, we can, before returning the, the, ver the Boolean, let's just print it in a nice format so that it's, it's clear when we run it. So, uh, okay. So I'm gonna try and print it out as a multiple of pi. So to, to two decimal places. So, you know, we're not, it, it doesn't, it just doesn't, I mean, I'm trying to print it out as a multiple of pi so that it's easier to read. So that's total divided by math pi and that many pies there's okay that that looks correct well i didn't try this before so i wouldn't be surprised if there were a bunch of bugs but you know, we'll have to get through them okay so now we have to get a mesh from the user so our mesh id will be rs dot get object is there a get mesh oh no, we don't want mesh mesh faces. We want object. Select mesh. And okay, yeah, we can use the mesh filter so that we get only meshes. And Let's just test the origin instead of asking the user to get a provide a point. So is point inside. That was the name of our function, right? Yep, is point inside. The first parameter is the mesh ID and the second parameter is the origin. And let's just print out a neat message. Is the point inside percentage s percentage and let's make that a conditional value yes in all caps if inside else no Okay, but let's see if that works. Okay, first we need a mesh. So I'll, I'll try to create the same shape that I used in the example. Yeah, my computer, excuse my computer for being a little bit slow because there's a lot going on. I'm trying to record all this and stuff. Yeah, okay. 
make a copy of that and translate it that way. And let's just subtract that. Okay, that kind of looks like the shape that I used in the example. And let's just switch to ghosted view, ghosted view so that you can see the inside. Okay, so let's move it away from the origin so the origin is clearly outside and run the script. And first, I, I'm sure we'll run into bugs, but Okay, unexpected. That's at least a syntactical. Why is that unexpected? Did we not close this one of these? Yeah, okay. We forgot to close that, the parentheses. Okay, select mesh. Okay, wait, that's not a mesh. Okay. <laughs> that was stupid. So let's convert that into a mesh. Doesn't matter how many polygons there are. It's a really simple shape. Yeah, I was being a little absent minded there. I thought that was a mesh. Okay, now we selected the mesh and another bug. That's a spelling mistake in line. 26, okay, it's face, 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 okay. What? 49, okay, it's not uppercase, it's lowercase. Okay, so the total solid angle is 0, 0, 0. 0. 0.00 pi. I mean, I'm sure it's not exactly zero, but whatever is the numerical error, it's less than one one hundredth of a pi. So it doesn't show in, in the first two decimal places. Is the point inside? No. Now let's move this so that Let's delete, get rid of that, and make sure the point is inside by looking in other views. So in the plan, it's clearly inside. In the side, front, and right views, it's also inside. So it's clearly inside. So let's run the script again. Boom. The total solid angle is 4 pi. Is the point inside? Yes. So yeah, uh, I'm surprised. That, that there were no other bugs other than a few typos. But yeah, this algorithm is very reliable and it, it's intuitive to understand. I'm sure you could implement it in a more efficient way than what I did here, but this is just a demo. And you know, this is intuitive and you can extend the same concept into two dimensions and measure normal plane angle instead of solid angle. Uh, so yeah, I hope you like this like this video and hope you this algorithm is helpful to you and thanks for watching the video oh wait 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 before i end the video that that is the original paper that had the algorithm so you can go find that and i'll also include a link in the description and also i'll also make this script available i'll put it on github or something uh so yeah thanks for watching this video i hope you liked it and Hope it was helpful. Bye.